Welcome back. So after last time when I got the parts that I needed to hook up this extra drain line to the redrive, I went in on uh, Saturday and got everything uh, reassembled. As you can see, it's just getting all back together. And then uh, had it all ready to test uh, first thing Monday morning. And I still wasn't super happy about how this thing was configured, uh, but ultimately there was such a small amount of oil coming out of that collar I figured it was worth a try to see if this new drain would would sort out the problem with you know no other residual oil anywhere or anything like that. Uh, but anyway, I ran it up as you can see here, warmed it up, and uh, you know had a run on there, and there was still a little bit of oil uh, leaking out of there. And the other thing I noticed too was um, I don't think the way I had the drain set up, where there was you know so many now wiring into each other and then going into a single. Uh, inlet feed into the sump of the engine. I wasn't really happy with that. So I was discussing it with Mark uh, after this run and in just in conversation there we kind of figured out that we could actually run this existing housing you know without machining a new one. And we could run it as a full oil bath setup provided that we didn't put a full-time uh, feed into it and I'll go over a bit more on how we're going to do that uh, in a minute. But as you can see here when I ran it up there the governor, even though it's jumping around and that, the governor system is actually working really well. Um, I had it about 3400 RPM and engaged the governor, it went about to 3100 RPM and it just stabilized there and held it there for a good, you know, 30 seconds. And as you see, even though that's jumping around, the RPMs on the engine are staying nice and stable. So that whole new oil collar is working really well and you just got to figure out, you know, how to uh, deal with the drain aspect of it. Um, so anyway, this is um, what's going to happen here. I'll explain it to you, and it's you know it's going to slow us down a little bit, um, but not as much as going and having a, a full new housing uh, machined at the machine shop. So here's the cutaway of the redrive in CAD, and uh, the reason why I never actually went with a full oil bath system up until now. Um, or a full oil feed system was because the engine would have to feed this and the engine puts out you know just enough oil at 60 psi to feed itself and if the redrive was receiving that same oil feed it would compromise the oil feed for the engine so I don't want to do that um, but in thinking about it um, Mark sort of pointed out well you know when the governor is running it is providing high pressure oil to this new oil collar and the advantage of that is that you know all of that oil is is providing kind of like a constant feed to uh, the redrive, and uh, when it's not running, the engine's kind of idling, and you don't need like a full feed you know to those bearings. So what we're going to do is we're going to have it so there's a drain in the bottom of the housing there that's part way up, and so the housing will always have like a a little low level of oil in the bottom of it enough that the bearings will actually be sort of sitting in that oil just like a bath and when the engine fires up the bearings will immediately be lubricated with that oil and just continue to stay lubricated with that oil and then when you start you know running full power on the engine the governor will be putting um, oil into the whole system which will have a fresh you know load of oil going through there and then ultimately when it gets above a certain level there it will strain a uh, drain back into uh, the sump of the engine so this way we're not compromising the oil feed to the engine but at the same time we are going to run full oil through this thing so there'll be no grease in the bearings anymore and the drains that are coming out the bottom there those will be basically blocked up and any oil going you know coming out of that oil collar will just go into the housing itself and fill up to that drain level at which point it will drain back into uh, the sump. So uh, spinning this around and um, having a look on the inside of it to see how it all works there, you can kind of see how it's configured. And this is the old configuration, obviously, because you know we haven't changed it in CAD yet. So those tubes, two tubes at the bottom there that are running the drain, they're going to disappear. Um, but the holes coming out of the collar, those will still be there, and that will allow the oil to drain out of the collar but at the same time it can still go through um, those two side bearings um, the ones that are sort of marked in red there and it can go through those to lubricate those which they're already lubricated right now from the fact that it was leaking through there in the first place and then the main bearings there um, on either side they'll be able to get um, you know the oil coming out of 
the the collar there as well, and what will you know ultimately be sitting in the bar. So these two tubes here, those are going to go away, and I'm going to get Brit to weld up the holes there. Just put a little cap on the holes in the housing there, so those those two holes there will be welded up, including that other one that was the old one there. So there's kind of like two and a half really, or two larger, one larger and one smaller hole. So he's going to weld those up. Um, and then the oil will be at a level that will actually be able to run through that large bearing there and down to where this oil seal is here. And so I had to buy a new oil seal for that as well because every time you take the old one out, um, you you know basically have to destroy it to get it out of there. There's no other way to do it. So I've ordered a new one of those. And the one at the other end, the smaller one at the other end, that was kind of like compromised anyway from a long time ago because it's never had oil against it. Um, so I've ordered uh, a new one of those and that'll be here later in the week and those bearings there, the small bearings, those are fine um, everything else is fine, the same things with those washers are fine These that, that area down the back there, that'll have oil in it there and once the oil starts slinging around when you're at full power it'll get sort of refreshed on either end same down with this end so we're basically running a full oil bath but not having to use you know the 60 psi feed uh, from the engine and with just a single drain that's going to be a, a brand new drain line going back to the sump so it's not going to be wying in with the other one um, and having to just sort of you know run everything down through this one smaller uh, setup and then this guy here that has to be sealed at the top there because the, sen the sump on the engine itself actually draws a slight vacuum so I've got to make sure that this redrive is sealed and I'll be doing a vacuum test on it once it's all together to make sure that it can hold a vacuum and if it doesn't it's potentially you know leaking in through the oil seals so anyway first job now that this is the plan is to drain the sump here because I have to take the sump off to put a new um, bung in there for this new additional oil feed or re oil return uh, so I got that all sorted out and drained and then taking off the sumps a little bit of a challenge there's a bunch of screws all the way around there and uh, you know then you've got to finagle a little bit around the engine mount but it's not too difficult uh, to get it out so anyway this is going to basically end up taking hmm, probably you know the best part of this week and so I had to delay a little bit because I had the DAR lined up to come this week on Wednesday uh, but he wanted to obviously see everything together and and the engine running and everything so I've put him off until next week and and he's got some other commitments later next week so it may actually be the following week before he can show up but it doesn't really matter because you know I can still do uh, the taxi testing that needs to happen and I'm all set up to do a static uh, thrust measurement as well I've got my my tie down straps and everything figured out and my uh, crane scale it's all basically sitting in the aircraft now so as soon as I have this all back together and test it I can go and do that so there's other things that need to happen and I've told our test pilots um, that there's a bit of a delay here another another week of a delay so not sure exactly when I'll be having them out and I have a feeling that they're going to be uh, going to uh, the Reno Air Races in the um, I think it's the second week of September or maybe the third week so I'm probably going to have to work around uh, that time frame as well so you know everything's being pushed out but I feel a lot better now about doing this full oil bar solution um, and as I said you know I wanted to do this all along but I I couldn't see a way of doing it with this existing housing um, without putting some sort of feed into um, you know the the whole thing that would use the engine thing but you know once Mark sort of pointed out that we didn't really need to have a full-on feed then it was obvious that we could use this housing we just need to you know patch up these other holes and sort out a drain that was higher up so you know we had a constant level of oil in the bottom of it um, so yeah, I feel much better about this solution even though it means you know more work and doing these few different things um, but you know in the long run when you know you get in the aircraft and you know that you've got a single oil feed in there and a single return and everything else should be operating smoothly within that um, I think everybody's going to feel a little better. You know, I know you guys have all been commenting, oh, this is where you got to do it. And believe me, I've wanted to do it, um, but I just didn't want to do it with putting a full-time feed from the engine in there and, uh, you know, having this partial feed 
is going to work fine. We'll, we'll be monitoring the temperature of that oil too just to make sure um, it doesn't get too hot because it won't be cycling quite as much as what it would be with a full-time feed. Uh, here you can see I'm just maneuvering the uh, sump a little bit. And once you take all the bolts out you have to break the the um, gasket seal which is you know it's a rubber uh, sealing compound that you put on there it's not just a regular gasket. So you have to break that you know, with a couple of different uh, sort of spatulas slid in in between it to break it free. And then you can do a little bit of maneuvering here around the uh, engine frame just to get the sump to drop out. So then I had to clean all that up and get it ready uh, for Brit you know, to put this new or to weld this new bung on there for uh, where the new um, return line is going to be. So I've got the one on there already is an AN8. Um, feeding through a quarter inch NPT hole and this is just showing you this with the sump off and I just took this video just to eyeball where this new return is going to be so there's the old one there and the new one's going to be off to the right so because I didn't want to just sort of jam them right next to each other and you'll see in a minute where we're going to put that uh, so that's the first job and the, that's for Brit to weld up that bung and then another job for him is to do is to weld up those other holes so here, this is up at Brit's place now, and there's the new weld bung, and I've kind of angled it already and then cleared out the hole, and Brit drilled the hole for me there. So this is how that one's going to sit there, just with a slight downslope, so it feeds in there nicely. And there's the old one over there again with a downslope. And this one actually has a larger hole in there because it's running a, a 3 8 inch NPT, and the other one was a quarter inch NPT, so that should work well. And then on the housing here, um, the oil bar is going to sit in the bottom there, sort of across that level there where I'm sort of pointing. And then those holes at the bottom will be blocked up except one will have a, a, a drain plug in it. And then the feed will be coming in here through that old uh, cap plug that I had before. And there'll be a new drain hole uh, in the side here on an angle about 30 degrees up from the 6 o'clock mark. So um, right about there where I'm sort of pointing my finger. So Brit's going to just cap those other holes. Anyway, so there's a bunch of stuff to do and it's going to delay things a little bit, but uh, yeah, that's the update for the first half of this week and tune in again on Saturday and see where we get to with this project. Thanks for watching.